Well, guys, if you're like me, you got a beard, and uh, it gets itchy. Girls, if your guy's got a beard, it gets itchy, dry, you want to smell better? Well, I got a place and stuff for you that you need to go. It's in this little baggie here. Stuff right here. Now, this is my personal favorite. It's called uh, Valhalla. And it is absolutely, that's the berries. To me, that's my favorite one. He has all kind of stuff available. It's on the face place. And here's an even better thing. If you mention that you saw it on Right Turn Garage TV, he's going to give you a free sticker with this cool logo on it. For free. Absolutely free. He also has shampoos and conditioners and all that stuff for your beard. Um, if you're local in Ohio, in the southern hemisphere, it's in Galpolis at Studio C. I can't remember the address, forgive me, but look up Studio C. It's right downtown on the main drag across the street from the big park where they do all the lights and all that good stuff. So, stop in, tell them right turn sent you, get you a free sticker, all right? This stuff is, it's worth it. So, give them a try and uh, you're gonna love it. I forgot the most important thing just now. How are you gonna order it if you don't know where to get it? Well, anyway, here we go. If you can see this, can you not? You might not. Well, I'll try to read it to you the best that I can. You can go to the Book of Faces, and everybody knows what I'm talking about whenever I say the Book of Faces, right? It's got the actual face and then the word book after it. You can go uh, B A M F Beard Oil. That's all one thing on the face place. And or you can stop in Studio C. And like I said, you can get this, you can get a free sticker. This is actually a business card, but you can get that free sticker by mentioning Right Turn Garage, and that's where you saw it. And that's pretty daggone cool. My buddy Todd Frazier actually drew that. He's very talented. So, anyway, that's how you get a hold of them. They can ship it to you and mail it to you. You know, whatever. Or you can just stop by and get it. And uh, they assured me that they're keeping up in stock. As, you know, they, they, they are swamped. And that's a good thing. So, go ahead and get you some before they sell out. All right? Don't forget them. Well, hey there, hi there, ho there. We got another episode of Right Turn Garage TV coming at you. And uh, this one came as a little bit of a surprise, not much. And because it's on the old Sunfire Bird. Yep. Now, I noticed that the brake light has been on this car ever since I got it. I at first thought it was this caliper that I replaced. So I replaced it. It was leaking and then I bled the brakes and they're perfect. So brake light remained on. I pretty much thought that maybe possibly I might want to pull the rear wheel and just look in the wheel cylinder area, you know, cause there's no more leaks besides probably a wheel cylinder, right? And then today as I'm getting some barley pops I noticed there was a uh, little wet area right there and then not not there or there so much but right yeah that hole inside right there so uh, it appears to me we absolutely positively have a leaking wheel cylinder so that's that's good that's good that it's you know only that I guess so tonight, hopefully, we're going to do the bada boom, bada bang, da bang real quick. I just cursed it, didn't I? I did. Dang it. Get a hammer, because you're going to need it. I, I already cursed it, guys. I'm sorry. So, we're going to go ahead and replace both, but you won't need to see both sides unless I encounter something really weird on the other side that I don't on this one for some odd reason. And this one's going to be the bad side, so... Join me, won't you? Let me get a flashlight so we can see a little bit better. 
Yeah, I was kind of hoping to do the mullet machine windshield, but you know, stuff happens. So, for these brakes here, I know it's been at least 11 years since that drum's been off because it's been setting for 11 years. So, we're just going to hit on the outside of it. And hopefully, it'll pop that sucker loose, but that dead going, oh, that lip's on there. Let me get something to get this off. This is actually the spacer for the rear wheels. Uh, i get a flathead for that. Get it off of there. So, you know, that can actually affect it. And we're going to grab, you know, one of them. I call them persuaders. You can call them whatever you like. So, if you have aftermarket wheels, pull them little things off the, the hub eccentric right here, will you? Because if not, you probably won't get the drum off. And if you do, you know. See, that was holding it on there pretty good. So, I'm going to turn. Oops. And you want to hit this outside lip. Believe it or not, most of the time it smacks right off of there. But the good thing is, I don't know how long this thing's been leaking, so it might be a little bugger, just to say the least. So let me get down here and really get into her. We're gonna go, like, let me see, I don't know, tip to tip. You see it, maybe, a little. I think it's actually moving. I think. Where's my... So. You don't want to hit the back side of this if you don't... You just don't want to hit the back side. There we go. See? Oh, yeah. I want you to see this. Yep, that, that thing has been leaking for, uh, uh, yeah, mm-hmm, sure has. So that's, oh, that's nasty. Luckily, we got plenty of this, you know, so we're gonna, we're gonna rebuild them, you know. Oh, gosh, that is so nasty. So you're gonna want a set of pliers, it looks like, and uh, some gloves before we start this ordeal. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So give me a few minutes. We're going to get the old drain pan, wherever it's hit, hiding at. Soak her down, clean it up, pull the springs apart, hopefully. And hopefully nothing like goes ka-ching, because I didn't buy any extra parts. I bought wheel cylinders. That's it. That's how much, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that this is, yeah. Give me just a few minutes and wish me luck. All right. So I don't know how you guys do your brakes, but if it's just a wheel cylinder for me and it's something like this, all I did was take these two springs. I took this one off first and I pinched it with a pair of Derek's favorite vice grips. Then you just pull it this way, take him down, do the same with this one. And this lever right here that runs down to this shoe like this, it hangs up here and it hooks to the back of that shoe just like that. Well, if you take this and pull it down, look at there, it lets that come forward, allowing you to release it off the back of there, and boom. Now you can get to your wheel cylinder, I believe. At least we're going to think we can. It looks like it. I'm going to unbolt it from the back here. There's two bolts somewhere. This one bolts in. Some of them have clips, some of them bolt in. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Clips and bolts in. Um, hopefully, the brake line comes like magically, deliciously free from it. And we don't have no issues because um, 
I didn't buy any extra parts. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but I didn't. So wish me luck. We're going to take the uh, out of there and uh, and hopefully we can get it out without removing a shoe. That's my all time goal here. If I can get that sucker out without removing a shoe, hashtag winning. You know what I mean? So give me a few minutes to get these bolts out of the back. Hopefully they are ready to come out. And uh, we'll see what happens here in a few, all right? Just give me a few minutes. So we got it. Um, Words of the Wise, remove the bleeder before and after, you know, before you install it and after you remove the brake line or, you know, something like that. Also, I had to take away the old shoe spreader because it got in the way. Then I had to remove that spring, but I didn't have to take the whole shoe off, which is a hold down and one more spring, and that would have been it. But there's a little trick to these darn things. These things are a pain in the butt to uh, get in there. They're awkwardly built and just, you know what? Why don't I just show you how to install it? Because you have to bend and twist and flip and, you know, if I can remember how to do it, and I doubt I can do it one-handed, so hold on a second. Can you see there? Okay, so I had to pry out on this shoe as far as I could. And let's see. Go in with the shoe like this, or shoe, wheel cylinder like this. And just kind of manhandle her a little bit. And you have to flip this darn thing around because your bolt holes are at the bottom. This right here is your whole problem with it. And just to anchor it in spot, good night. Are you kidding me? Yeah, this thing is not, they're not easy. I'm not even, it's just, it was a whole lot of trickery just to get it in there. Like, uh, that and then you bend it up a little, I think, right? That's how I did it. Gotta go something like, okay, like that. I'm telling you, it took me 15 minutes to get this stinking thing out. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm trying to keep that little cover in there so I can keep all the nastiness out of this brand new one. But there's no way you're getting it removed without taking the uh, bleeder out of it. There's just no way. Oh, another little thing that I found. You're going to need a 6.5 millimeter socket for these bolts. They're a funky looking deal. A 6.5 6 .5 millimeter is what you need. Don't try to take it out with anything else. You'll strip it. I just thank goodness that I had one laying around, so, you know. Oh, this thing is just... This is craziness, I tell you. I don't even remember how I took this darn thing out. I just twisted it so much. Isn't that terrible? I think that I had it like, the hell, like this. And then flip it. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. Maybe. I don't I don't know what words mean. Get in there. All I know, it was a real pain in the booty. Trust me, you can get it without taking off the shoe. Taking off both shoes isn't going to help you because it's just so tight. They could have designed a backing plate like a little more friendly for, you know, anyone. But trust me, you're going to have to bend, flip, and twist. This shoe prying out over the drum area was the key to the old success. So I'm going to try to remember how I got it out of there. I, I really just kept working it until it just like almost fell out. 
So if I can remember how to get it back in there, I'll show you guys, okay? If not, um, yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Okay, so hopefully I can repeat this. I had this all the way down, bolts pointed down to the ground. Whenever you get it to the hole, you flip it up and it slides right in. I think, yep, there she goes. So that's the trick, bend it down. Like if your bolts are down here, bend it this way, and then you can slide it out toward the front. And then I'll show you guys how to bleed them and all that good stuff here in a few, all right? Actually, just stay right there and we'll see if we can't. Yeah. Make sure I ain't lying, Tiggies. Unplug the line. Yep, it did line back up, good. Man, this thing's a pain in the rear, I'm telling you. Ain't seen nothing like it. All right. Don't forget your two bolts. All right, so that did work. That bolted it right in. So if you remove this piece right here, now you're just sliding back in the same way you got it. The more, the shorter end goes to the inside. Slide them over the shoes. Slide that one back in a spot. And you have to pop your shoes back over the backing plate because that's what I was cheating to help hold it. So that goes that back in. Now, the very th first thing that I removed was this sucker right here. So it's the very first thing that I'm putting back on. I go back down here, right down here to this star wheel adjuster. Push down on it. That donut thing stiff. I'm, I'm making a mess now. Hold on, hold on. Just don't, don't do it. Maybe it'd be easier if I hook this burger. Might be. Star wheel adjuster. You pull it out and push down at the same time to get it away from the star wheel adjuster. Well, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I can't really do that. That won't, that won't work a bit, will it? That it. There we go. Make sure you don't pinch this spring that goes on second. Now, to get that back on there, you just do that. See how easy that works? A lot of people have trouble with that. This was the second spring I removed. So, you know what? I like using a flathead screwdriver if I didn't lose it. There it is. Put him in there. Usually this works. Hopefully I didn't curse myself. Boom. There's that one. Mother string, I think went right here. That looks good. Let it get in there. Skid it. I think that's where it went, right? Didn't go there, did it? No. I used to have a brake tool for this, but to tell you the truth, you don't do drum brakes hardly at all anymore unless you own old junk like me. So, get that back in there, slide that through. Then you just, just like a brake spring tool, put it over the edge. Boom, you just got them back together. Give me a few minutes to button all this up and I'll show you how we're gonna bleed them by ourselves. 
So, in order to bleed your brakes by yourself, and you don't need this, but it just makes it a lot better. It's a little, you know, vacuum tester, tap, slash, you know, brake bleed type thing, you know. And as you can see, that gauge will go up. And as it goes up, it's pulling vacuum. What that's allowing it to do is suck all the air out of the system through this bleeder. It is a super handy deal. Super handy. I mean, you can really bleed brakes a heck of a lot faster by yourself, more efficiently. And you also put brake fluid in this reservoir right here. And make sure you hook up your lines right on this. If not, you'll get uh, brake fluid all over your, you know, inside of here. And it's not gooder. Not that that just happened or anything like five minutes ago, but I'm just saying I know a guy that, you know, that could have happened to. And anyway, just look here. It's just, see all the bubbles coming out? That's a good, good sign. So, we're gonna do this for a few minutes. Let it slowly bleed. Then I'm going to tighten the bleeder, and I'm actually going to go in the car and fill the pedal. If it feels good, we're going to call it good. Actually, we're going to turn on the car and see if the brake light's out, because I'll bet you it is after this. And uh, if that's so, then you just switched out wheel cylinders by yourself and bled your brakes by yourself. Go ahead and celebrate with a barley pop. So... This thing is hopefully, I feel like we're getting somewhere with it. I think we are. I mean, this is just like pumping the old brake pedal, you know? In, in my eyes it is, so. All right, let's see where we're at. Because I've got all kind of goodness just that, you know, it might be good to pump the brake anyway, and you know what? What the world did I do with that? Is that it? Probably was, and I dropped it. I'm gonna get a wrench. We'll see. Oh, sorry. You're looking at me the whole time. <laughs> Poor you. All right, so tighten your bleeder. Also, guys, make sure, make sure that you fill up the master cylinder before you start doing all this. We're still good. Now, these things are known to like spit fluid if you press the old gas or brake pedal without that thing on. So unless you want brake fluid everywhere, I think we might need to bleed it just a little bit more. She feels just a little bit, you know, but that's okay. We still got a heck of a long way just by using the vacuum pump on it. So what we're gonna do, Yep, we still got air. So did you see the bubble? If you saw the bubble, you still have air, and that's fine. It'll just take you a few more, you know, you can either let it gravity feed, or you can, if you have a friend, which of course I don't, but if you have one, you know, have him push the pedal down when you crack the bleeder. Tighten the bleeder, have him let up, and pump the brakes. That's how you bleed brakes. Don't pump the brakes with the bleeder open. You just sucked in a whole bunch of air. So, that being said, I think, friends, that we're going to be in good shape here. I see nothing but fluid. And this is just, this is what they call gravity feeding. Whenever you're by yourself, you know, bleeding by your lonesome, pumping the pedal, Running around the car like a maniac. Ooh. Yep. 
and you'll probably have to do that with the vacuum pump just so you know that it'll probably absolutely make you bleed it gravity wise at least once or twice expect that and if you just see fluid you're good I see very 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 little air so I'll bet I'll bet this one's gonna make it good and we still got one more to do so whatever don't come out in this It'll come out in this, I promise you. Because we're going to do a little test. A little curiosity, killing the old kitten kind of test. Like, I'm betting that was my brake light the whole time on this car. <laughs> Man, was I right or was I right? Nope, I was wrong. Nope, I was right. So that was the wheel cylinder the whole time that was causing the brake light to be on. Because it must have sensed a uh, uneven pressure, I believe it is, in the system. Oops. But honestly, I had excellent brakes in this thing. And uh, if I wouldn't have been, you know, extra attentive and paying attention to... Uh, the gas station and there being a little spot of brake fluid on the inside of my wheel it would have still been leaking not gonna lie so do the right thing don't do what i did and just you know hit the delete button in your memory of that thing being on fix it and move on i mean these things are 13 bucks a piece that's really not worth not having rear brakes but I'm the only one that really rides in this car 97% of the time. So <laughs> I guess that's why I let it go. That and, you know, you know, she's a pretty beast. I like it. And, you know, it's really good with these gas prices going on. So that's my little two cents on wheel cylinders and all that good fun. Hopefully it was good for you. It was good for me. And uh, to that little electric car that piped me while i was in my trans am we're back on the road baby you won't do that with this sucker i'm not kidding you he had like the little sound thing and he like hit his speaker and revved it up like a formula one car i was just like whoa don't want no problems bro just let me go but anyway hopefully this was good for you guys and hopefully it helps you just remember you're absolutely positively going to have to have that six and a half, six point five millimeter for the wheel cylinders, and um, you don't have to remove the shoe. And it's a little bit of a burger. Don't let it get you. You get it, okay? So that being said, I'm gonna hurry up, knock this thing out so I can drive her to work tomorrow. Oh yeah, and the IROC, the mullet machine, sitting outside, and I hope it's not going to rain. So I really got to hurry now. So. I'll see you guys next time, and if you don't mind, just a real quick, you know, hit that old subscribe and like button. Leave me a comment. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time here on Right Turn Garage TV.